Hello, my name is Fox, and you're watching Den of Fools. Let's jump right in. The Michigan GT took place in Lansing, USA from the 7th to the 8th of October 2023. The tournament had five rounds with 125 players and 598 games played. Brenton Vice won the tournament with Daryl Dari. Scott Ketchum and their sisters came second, with Brad Chester running Orcs in third. Big congratulations to all these players, and big apologies for the poor pronunciation of their names. The winning Eldari list consists of many of the popular choices we have covered in previous tournament spotlights, so I won't go too in-depth on their rules. Having said that, we see the popular Farseer and an Altark Wayleaper as the Warlord. We see both avatars with the Yinkan and the Avatar of Kane. I think the Yinkan in particular is rather strong, with its ability to teleport where a unit dies once per phase. We have two Fire Prisms, which are still very effective for their cost. A single Night Spinner is taken, with the indirect fire devastating wounds Doomweaver. There is a 5 elf squad of Shadow Spectres. No list we have seen since the changes have taken the Exarch. Much like the second place Aldari list we saw in our previous tournament spotlight, this list takes Swooping Hawks, but this time they take two units. There is a squad of the seemingly obligatory Warp Spiders, and two War Walkers with the Bright Lancers. Although not as oppressive as before, they are still one of the armies to beat. The second place list is the first Adeptus Auroritas list we have featured on one of our tournament spotlights. It is nice to see some other factions getting a top 3 at some big tournaments. With that said, we have a Dialogus, who allows the unit they are leading to use stratagems when battleshocked. They also change the first miracle dice you use to a 6 when you perform an act of faith. For those who are unaware, an act of faith is when you use a miracle dice instead of rolling before you make an advance, charge, hit, wound or damage roll, and also when you make a saving throw or battleshock test. Having the first one you use each time you perform an act of faith is very useful indeed. It will also be very good in mitigating any low miracle dice rolls. I am sure they were leading the big 10 woman squad of Battle Sisters. Next we see Morven Val as the Warlord, who would have been leading the squad of 3 Paragon Warsuits. They both move 8 inches and have toughness 6, a 2 plus save and a 4 plus invul. Val has 8 wounds compared to the 4 of the normal suits, which makes sense. Val will give the unit full rerolls to hit and wound, a very potent damage increase. At range she hits on 2s with the Fidelis and her Paragon Missile Launcher. The launcher has two profiles, one makes two attacks at strength 9, AP 2 and D6 damage for heavy targets, the anti-light infantry profile makes two D6 attacks with blast at strength 4 with one damage. Fidelis adds another three attacks with sustained hits 1 at strength 6, AP 1 and 2 damage. In melee the Lance of Illuminations makes five attacks with the strike profile with devastating wounds at strength 8, AP 2 and 3 damage. The sweep mode makes ten attacks at strength 5, AP 1 and 1 damage. She has a versatile array of weaponry which will be able to do significant damage against light or heavy infantry. Her missile will also be able to chip, chip off some wounds from enemy armour. To add to this, once per game in the command phase, she can add free to the attack's characteristics of two Fidelis and the Lance of Illuminations. The Paragon she will be leading bring multi-melters for a big anti-tank punch, especially when you account for Val's rerolls. One takes the mace, which makes free attacks, hitting on fours at strength 12, AP 1 and damage 3. The two blades make four attacks, hitting on threes at strength 6, AP 2 and damage 2. Their ability allows them to fall back, shoot and charge, which will be very useful when needed. Overall, I think this squad can handle a range of targets, and they're not the easiest to take down with their 2 plus saves and 4 plus involves. Next we see the popular Triumph of St. Catherine, which is near autumn include for what it does for 125 points. It moves 6 inches, only has toughness 3, but it has a 3 plus save and 4 plus invul, a massive 18 wounds, and a rather useful OC of 6. The invul and the massive amount of wounds will make it rather annoying to remove. It can lead a Battle Sisters squad, however, I imagine it didn't due to the other HQs leading the single squad. They don't really need to lead a unit, as their ability allows you to choose two of six auras at the start of the battle round to be active until the next one. All auras are six inches, and they affect any sister's unit. The first aura ability you can choose gives you an automatic six for your miracle dice when a friendly sister's unit is destroyed. You can improve the leadership of units by one, or allow units within the aura to use as many acts of faith as you want, rather than the usual one per phase. You can also give 1 to the attack's characteristic of rapid fire weapons, a 6 plus feel no pain to all units, or lethal hits for all units. The wide variety of potential buffs does make this unit very good, but for me the standout ones are the 6 plus feel no pain and lethal hits. Personally, I think I would have these two active most battle rounds. They can chip in some light infantry damage with 6 bolt pistol shots and an impressive 18 melee attacks, hitting on 2s at strength 5, AP 2 and damage 1. Finally, for the HQs, we have a Palantine with the Blade of St. Eleanor, which gives them plus one attacks, strength, and damage to the bearer's melee weapons, 
which goes to 2 plus when they have lost one or more wounds. This will help their 4 attack strength for AP2 and damage 2 blade. As the sister's lieutenant equivalent, they give the squad they are leading lethal hits, with another powerful ability to go with this. When their unit is selected to fight, you can discard one miracle dice to give you a mortal wound in addition to every time you score a normal wound. I would imagine they led the big squad of battle sisters with the dialogus. The battle sisters can give you a miracle dice when you use an act of faith once per game. Also, at the end of your command phase, for each objective marker you control with a unit which has the Defenders of the Faith ability, you get a Miracle Dice. This is some nice generation for the unit, and the Simulacrum gives you an additional Miracle Dice each time you destroy a unit. I would imagine this squad and the characters were in one of the two Rhinos. We then see no less than three max 10-man squads of Arcoflagellants. They move seven, with toughness three, two wounds, but a high save, and leadership with seven and eight respectively. They do have a 4 plus feel no pain to make up for not having a save. The fails make 4 attacks hitting on 4s at strength 5 on damage 1. They do have sustained hits 1 and twin linked. Their ability allows you to choose whether to activate insane mode each time the unit fights. All your flails will have 6 attacks but will gain the hazardous keyword. With such a large quantity of attacks, I'm sure they could deal with most infantry through sheer weight of numbers. They have 2 castigators, the sisters predator equivalents, with a 6 plus invul. The battle cannon gets reroll hits against monsters and vehicles, and the auto cannons get reroll hits against infantry, which is very useful to have. One enemy unit hit by either weapon also has to make a battle shock test. We then have two exorcists, which take the anti armor missiles, which make D6 plus 2 shots with heavy and indirect fire, out of 36 inches. They hit on threes with strength 10, AP2, and damage D6 for a significant punch. We have a seraphim squad with two hand flamers, which I would imagine was used to quickly get across the board with their move shoot move ability. Finally, we have the popular allied Calidus Assassin. The third place Orslis takes Captain Badrock himself as the Warlord. The Ripper makes three attacks hitting on an Orky 5 plus with heavy and sustained hits 1. The Supercharger strength 8, AP 3 and 3 damage with the hazardous keyword. He will of course be leading the big squad of flash gits with Badrock giving the whole unit reroll hits at range. Also, any enemy infantry unit within 6 inch of Badrock has their toughness reduced by 1. The flash kit snaz guns also hit on fives, making three attacks with heavy and sustained hits one. They are not quite as potent as the Ripper, hitting at strength six, AP one, and damage two. When they target the closest eligible target, they get four attacks with their snaz guns rather than three. With the reroll hits from Badrock, they can actually do some decent damage to elite infantry. We then have Mozrock Scragbag on Big Chomper. He moves ten inches with toughness ten, a three plus save, and four plus invul, and nine wounds. He also has a 4 plus feel no pain, which makes him rather tanky. He gets plus 1 damage against monsters and vehicles, and plus 2 against titanics. Each time he declares a charge, unmodified wound rolls of 5 count as critical wounds. This pairs very nicely with his monstrous melee threat. He makes 6 attacks hitting on 2s with gut ripper, at strength 7, AP 1 and damage 3. It also has anti 4 plus for monsters and vehicles, making it rather potent against the right target. Big Chomper then makes 3 extra attacks with his jaws, hitting on freeze at strength 7, AP 2, and damage 4 with devastating wounds. With those triggering on 5s, on the charge he will literally chew through armour. We then have a knob on Smasher Squig with Head Whopper's Kill Chopper, which gives his Big Chopper devastating wounds. I would imagine they led the big 6-man squad of Squig Hog Boys. All the Squigs move 10 inches with toughness 7, a 4 plus save, and 3 wounds for the standard boys with an extra 2 for the knob. They all have a 5 plus feel no pain to make them a little more durable. The Squig Hog Boys can ignore all modifiers to their movement, advance rolls, and charge rolls while the knob gives the unit plus one to hit in melee. When the war is called, the boy's big chopper has anti free plus for monsters and vehicles. Considering this weapon has devastating wounds with three attacks, hitting on freeze at strength 7, AP 1, and damage 2, they should be able to dish out some significant damage against the right target. The Hog Boys stickers have the same profile, but make three attacks at strength 5 with the Lance Key word. All their extra attacks hit on 4s at strength 7, AP 1 and 2 damage, with the knob making 2 attacks compared to the Hog Boys 3. I must say personally I am a big fan of these models, and I'm sure they were very useful for getting to objectives with some decent melee to back it up. We then have a Pain Boy who gives the unit they are leading a 5 plus feel no pain. I do love their Erty Syringe, which makes 1 attack hitting on 3s at strength 2 and damage 1. It has precision, extra attack and anti-infantry 4 plus, and when it gets a critical wound against anything other than vehicles, it does d6 mortal wounds. Finally for the HQs, we have the Autumn Include Warboss, 
who does a lot for his 65 points. His Power Claw makes 4 attacks, hitting on freeze at strength 10, AP 2 and damage 2, which should do well against Elite Infantry. He gives the unit he is leading plus 1 to hit in melee, and he makes 4 extra attacks to all melee weapons when the war is called. Like the Pain Boy, I would imagine he led one of the big 10-man squads of knobs. They are reasonably durable with a toughness 5, a 4 plus save and 2 wounds. They also get minus 1 to wound when a Warboss is leading the unit. They all take the Power Claws, although theirs have 1 less attack and strength, and it hits on 4s. Still, with the buffs from the characters, they should deal some big damage in melee. We have free trucks, presumably for the knobs and flash gates. Keeping in theme with the highly mobile army, we have free squads of Storm Boys. They move 12 inches, equipped with choppers, and the knobs take the power claw. The unit is able to declare a charge the turn it advanced, however you have to roll a d6 for each model, and on a 1 the unit suffers a mortal wound. The ability can't be used on the same turn you called the war. Finally, we have two 10-man squads of Gretchen, which are very useful for objectives with their OC2. While they are on objectives, you also get a CP on a roll of a 4+. At least one Gretchen squad is mandatory to sit on your home field objective at only 40 points for 10 and the Runt Herd. Unsurprisingly, the Space Marines are the most played faction with 16.8%. The Aldari, Orcs and Necrons are all joint second with 8%. It takes our resident stats guru and Ultramarine fanboy Fearless Fox many hours to collect all the data. It would be great if you could show your appreciation by liking and sharing the video. It really helps us with the god algorithm of YouTube. We have grouped the win rates by colour with the key at the bottom of the screen. The tournament's second place finishers sisters top the win rates with 75%. The joint second most popular and tournament third place finisher Orcs come next with 66%. Votan, World Eaters and Harlequins all get 60% with the tournament winner and joint second most popular Aldari getting 54.2%. The Tyranids get 51.1%, with the most popular faction Space Marines and Imperial Knights on a 50% win rate. The final joint second most popular faction, the Necrons, only manage a win rate of 41.7%. Black Legion got a 40% win rate, with the Alpha Legion losing all of their games. The Raven Guard lead the way for the Loyalists, with their one player getting an 80% win rate. The most popular chapter, the Black Templars do well, with a win rate of 62.9%. The single Ultramarines player is the last chapter in blue, with a 60% win rate. The Iron Hands are the only chapter in green with 50%, while the White Scars are the only chapter in yellow with 40%. The Dark Angels get a win rate of 38.9%, with the Blood Angels on 36.8%. The Space Wolves are at the bottom, with a win rate of 20%. If you enjoyed our content, please subscribe, check out one of the videos on screen, and consider using our affiliate links in the description. Thank you for watching.